Hey there, once again, YouTube. How are you guys doing today? Um, I definitely need to make a video. By the way, Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve right now. It's 9.19 p.m. Pacific Time, December 24th, 2018. So, Merry Christmas. Now, I just wanted to talk about a few things quick in this video. First, starting off with, probably you guessed it, the seismicity that we've been seeing up near Vancouver Island. Now, we saw a few magnitude 5s, a magnitude 6.0, another 6.0, and then a 6.3 about a day later. The 6.3 actually happened uh, a little over an hour ago as of right now. So, yeah, and these are not aftershocks because I did see one news station reporting that there are two magnitude 6 aftershocks. Well, in order to have aftershocks, you need a main shock. So far, the most recent one was a main shock of a 6.3, but if this seismicity trend is continuing, then these are could be four shocks, or this could just be a swarm of earthquakes. So, here we have Vancouver Island right down here. Seattle is right down all the way down here. There's Seattle right there. And uh, so, on the 23rd, actually, about a day, day and a half ago or so, we did see an increase in seismicity starting with a 5.2. And by the way, they all say 10 kilometers in depth because the depth was not constrained correctly. They are not all occurring at 10 kilometers in depth. That's just the likely depth that USGS believes it occurred at. Now, 5.2, then it started, with, it started with a 5.2, went to a 5.7 a few hours later, and then a few minutes later, there's a 6.0, and then about an hour after that, there is another 6.0, and the 6.0 occurred on the end right here, and also at the end right down here. Then there's a 4.7 aftershock, oh, actually along the Cascadia subduction zone, because this is where the Cascadia subduction ends, is right up here. Notice this conjunction right here. This is the conjunction with the Cascadia subduction zone right here. Now, here's the North American plate, and then we have the Pacific plate, and then the Explorer uh, plate right in the middle. These earthquakes are occurring right in the middle, actually, right here in a strange location. This actually is not the first time we have seen seismicity like this, uh, but this is the strongest, I believe, in quite some time for this location. And larger earthquakes could be on the way. That is very possible. Could be related to the Cascadia subduction zone. Maybe, maybe not. But the direction of most of the earthquakes kind of do fit the Cascadia subduction zone. But it's too early to tell. Too early to tell. But let's go take a look at the, it's ever since 2010, how many earthquakes magnitude 5 and above have been striking here. And you will notice that there kind of is a trend, kind of like we have seen swarms like this before. The 6.3, that's pretty big, guys. That, that's pretty big. And it's the largest so far, so we should definitely keep a closer eye on this location as well. And something else is going on with the Cascadia subduction zone, which I will talk about in just a little bit. All right, so we're looking for similar swarms ever since about 2010. Uh, this is magnitude 5 and above for this location here off the coast of Vancouver Island um, since December 18th, 2009 to right now, December 24th, 2019. So about 10 years worth, uh, 10 years worth of seismicity magnitude 5 and above. And you can tell this whole area is very, very busy. Going down, the most recent one that was larger than today's 6.3 was a 6.2 earlier this year, actually, on July 4, 2019. It was a very, very, July of this year was a very busy month, especially with the Ridgecrest earthquakes. Remember those uh, magnitude 6.3 or 6.4 and then the 7.1 that hit Ridgecrest uh, in the coastal volcanic field back in July. But the, to get to one bigger, you'd have to go to... This is the one I was looking for, October 22nd, 2018, where we saw multiple earthquakes strike in very close proximity to one another. Down here, actually, a little bit farther south from today's events, or the past few days' events. And you can see it was a 6.5 on October 22nd, 2018, at 539 UTC. Then less than an hour later, there was a 6.8, guys. Yeah, that was pretty strong. Pretty strong, noteworthy earthquake. And then a 6.5. So all within less than an hour of each other, we saw 6.5, 6.8, and then another 6.5. And then, of course, a 5.2 afterwards. And that was all in 2018, in October 2018. Uh, so that that sequence, I believe, in my opinion, is a little more concerning than the recent sequences. And nothing really came of it except a 6.8. I mean, that's a pretty strong earthquake, guys. Not the strongest, but... That's a Nisqually quake right there, 6.8, but it was all the way out in the ocean. Same with uh, the most recent events, so, I mean, not that many people will feel it. Going down, you don't see too much swarming, actually, except, look at this. 
on September 3rd, 2013, we saw 6.1, 5.1, 5.5, and then a day later, we saw 6.0. And these were occurring up here, just a little bit north. So we do see these splotches of kind of intense seismicity, but it's very quick. It's usually very quick within about a day it's over. And you can sometimes see a few sixes or so. But it's, So it's interesting that we did see another 6.3 today, actually. And we're going to take a look at the seismic data from the closest seismic station in just a minute. Looking back... Not seeing any other swarms. So since 2009, we've seen about three swarms or so with multiple magnitude sixes within each swarm. The most recent, of course, was December 23rd, 2019 through today, December 25th, 2019. Remember, this is in UTC and they are ahead of our time. Okay, so let's take a look from the closest seismic station. Let's actually go to the most recent one that we saw today. Uh, take the data. Let's see which station is the closest. Give it a second. Alrighty. So we had 21 felt reports, even though this earthquake was well off into the ocean. And let's go to Ord. Alright, go to Phases. And Arrival Time. Click it once. So, it is looking like... Here, let me click that again. It looks, it looks like JEDB. In the CN network was the closest station. We're going to take some data from that station right now and take a look at the past few days worth of seismicity in this location. Also, guys, don't forget to keep an eye on my website, monitorsize.net. A link to it is in the description box below where I update multiple things that are occurring. I do monthly updates in the monthly volcano updates. I still need to do an uplift subsidence update, which I haven't done in like three or four months. So that needs to be updated right there. But I do monthly volcano updates, usually out by the fifth of every month. Uh, Steamboat Geyser eruptions. I have a page for 2020. It's obviously not 2020 yet. But I show the most recent Steamboat Geyser eruptions of 2019. Go check that out. I usually upload load and uh, update it as soon as a steamboat geyser eruption is seen by myself and then, then i have my yellowstone blog for swarms that occur at yellowstone that i keep an eye on my hawaii blog which i mainly keep an eye on spasmodic tremor with and of course if you want to learn how to do everything i do if you want to learn how to retrieve seismic data how to read it what uh, programs to read it with simply go to my how to menu right down here there are multiple multiple things that you can learn from this kind of little seismic learning center right here seismic events has event examples you know a bunch of different stuff so come check out my website if you like earthquakes and waveforms and spectrograms and all that good stuff all right here we have seismic data straight from jedb which is the closest seismic station to the events that have been occurring off the coast of vancouver island not too far from our home here in washington state now, this is for a few days, or actually about a day, day and a half ago, when the magnitude 6s struck in that same location. Here's the first one, which was, I believe, a 5.2, if I remember correctly. Uh-oh. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, if I remember correctly, I believe this is a 5.2. You can see it right here. You see the PNS wave arrivals just on the spectrogram, too. Yeah, see? PS wave arrivals right about here. Uh... Let's keep going forward. Don't see too much. And then, boom. I believe this was the 5.7 that occurred. Some pretty low frequencies. I know this station is far away, and we should see some lower frequencies. But these are some very low frequencies. Let's see the dominant. Let's see. I have a 1 hertz high pass filter on here, by the way. Uh, strength actually spikes at about 1.1 hertz. And it goes down to about 3.1 hertz. And then there's a little bit of strength after 5 hertz, but most of the energy is released below 5 hertz. So I'm not saying it's a low frequency earthquake, but from the closest seismic stations, I can tell it, these are got some really strong lower frequencies. And there is something I'll show you in just a second. Here's one of the 6.0s that did strike. But yeah, there's something I'll show you in just a second that kind of makes me think that these could be related to volcanic activity. It's very possible because, you know, there are lots of undersea volcanoes out there that erupt all the time, guys. Keep going forward, keep going forward. Multiple magnitude 4s, maybe magnitude 3 here and there. And then, boom, this one was the magnitude 6 that occurred afterwards as well. Going forward, we see some type of low-frequency event. I don't know. That could not be related. This one, however, where'd it go? Is it this? Uh, which one was it? 
this one right here is definitely a low frequency event look at that you see that this is what makes me think that this could have been volcanic in nature it's very possible i mean you know maybe not but it's very interesting because the characteristics of this earthquake right here are far different from the characteristics of these events here even though they both do have similar lower frequencies for example here's one and then here's this one totally two different types of events could be related to an eruption or something and then we have some smaller earthquakes throughout the mix and then it calms down for about a day until just recently the past few hours we saw a magnitude 6.3 strike off the, the coast of vancouver island so seismicity is not done yet for this area guys and i'm not really seeing too many aftershocks related to this a few teeny teeny tiny ones here and there but the 6.3, which is the largest so far in the most recent sequence, uh, 6.3 didn't have any aftershocks. So there could be more to come. Keep an eye on it. Let's move on. If anybody lives here locally in Washington State, this should look familiar. There's Lake Washington, Seattle's over here, Bothell. I live right up here. He <laughs> he Um, so I uh, just want to let you guys know. You guys probably already know. Probably have already heard this a few times from other people, but I. Just wanted to put my two cents on it. The recent seismicity here in Falls City, which is near Carnation, Washington State. Uh, we had multiple events, guys, over the past month. 1.6, 1.3, 2.5, 1.7, 1.6, 0.6, 3.0, .6, which was felt by multiple people. 1.7, 1.3, 0.7, 1.5, 1.4, 1.4, 1.3. .4, and a 3.4, which is red bold, which is labeled as significant by USGS. And somewhat is significant, actually rattled the doors and the windows of some people who live in this area. Over a thousand people reported feeling it. I would have definitely felt it up here in Bothell. But I was playing with my kids, and, you know, it would have been just some light shaking, but nothing too crazy. However, going backwards a little bit, we've seen that seismicity has been puttering along for a little bit for a good few months in this location, including a 3.2 on November 9th, 2019, just a little over a month ago. So seismicity has been increasing in this location, and I have noticed um, some few extra earthquakes along the southern Woodby island fault zone if you don't know the southern Woodby island fault zone extends from the strait of juan de fuca all the way down into the rattlesnake mountain fault zone which cuts into the cascade range actually in my opinion it could be as dangerous if not more dangerous than the san andreas fault no joke it's not as long as the san andreas fault but i believe it, it could produce more damage I mean, I don't know. It's it probably on par with the San Andreas, but it's poorly understood. It starts from right about here and cuts down through this entire area and ends right about Fall City, where the Seattle Fault joins. And then we got the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault right down here. Here, I'll show you. Why don't I show you real quick? Why don't I? I think that's a good idea. I think I should show you guys. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go to terrain. All righty. And I just want you guys to notice the trend of these earthquakes in the past a few months of seismicity kind of are trending towards the west-ish. Ish. I'm saying ish because they have been swarming kind of in a circular pattern right here. But I kind of notice there is kind of a trend, a kind of a line right here. Okay, so we are going to... So remember this. It's just barely to the east of the downtown Carnation and Fall City. So right in this location right here, we're going to go up to a new tab. We're going to go to USGS Faults. Going to go to the U.S. Coordinary Faults map. And it has maps. Uh, I'll leave a link to this in the description box below. All the maps, uh, or excuse me, all the faults are mapped by USGS in this interactive map player, which I really, really use all the time. It's a great tool because when you turn on the U.S. faults earthquake map on USGS, uh, earthquake.usgs.gov, it doesn't show you all the faults. And the faults it does show, it doesn't show the entire fault system. So this is definitely a good, good tool for you to use if you want to discover which faults could be the culprit of any seismicity or any coming seismicity as well. Okay. All right, let's zoom in to my hometown of Bothell. Uh-oh. So, as you know, I live up here in Bothell. Now, something that I've been keeping a close eye on is the Southern Whidbey Island Fault Zone. I don't know if you can see it very well in here. Maybe I can. Let me change the... Let me go to change the map gallery just so you can kind of see the faults a little bit. Let's do dark just for right now. Okay, that's good. 
Come on, buddy. Okay, so Bothel is right about here. Do you see all of these orange scarps? All of these orange lines going all the way up this way. Don't look at this. Look at this right here. This entire fault system stretches all the way northwest, all the way up into British Columbia right here, uh, Vancouver Island. So it starts at the southeastern tip of Vancouver Island, stretches all the way down this location, all the way down here, and is rumored to be connected to the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault Zone, which is this one right here. Rattlesnake Mountain Fault Zone. Now, I want you to notice something very, very intriguing. And this is capable of a magnitude point five, which would be very destructive to Bothell, Kirkland, Everett, Kenmore, Kingsgate, Redmond, Seattle. I mean, you name it. Bellevue. Magnitude 7.5 of a whole fault rupture. And as happened before, 3,000 years ago, it did happen. And there are fault scarps actually pretty much in my own backyard here in Bothell, Washington. I actually pretty much live right on top of a fault scarp from the old rupture uh, 3,000 years ago. Yeah, it has not seen a major quake for 3,000 years, guys. That's a long time for a fault to stay silent. Even though it does creep slowly, but still, that's a long, long time for a fault to remain silent. Something I want you to keep your eye on. Notice the conjunction down here of these three fault systems. Notice how we have the Southern Woodby Island Fault System right down here. Joins with the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault System right here. And joins with the Seattle Fault System, which is magnitude 7. So we have two very dangerous faults that can join with the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault System right down here. Let me zoom in for you, shall I? Now I want you to notice where this fault system converges. Remember how the earthquakes were occurring? Here, let's go back to the earthquake map. Right over here, just barely east of Carnation and Fall City, right in the middle right there. Let's go back. That would be right in this location right here. They're occurring along this stretch right here. Notice that? So that means they are occurring just, I'm going to say, three miles east of the conjunction of the Seattle Fault, the Rattlesnake Mountain Fault System, and the Southern Woodby Island Fault System. Right in that perfect, I'm going to say, is right term, fulcrum point, kind of. We're pretty much perfectly right where they all converge, but just to the east. I thought that's been pretty interesting. I don't know, guys. I'm just keeping a close eye on it. Obviously, I don't want a large earthquake to happen because that would be very devastating to my family and I. So just pray for us. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. If it does, I hope we are well prepared. But I just want to state that. Now, I want to move on to something else real quick. Here we are at pnsn.org slash tremor, and these are tremor epicenters. Again, these are not earthquake epicenters. Tremor is long duration, so although it says it could be the same energy released as a magnitude 1.4, 1.5, that is over multiple minutes instead of occurring all at once. So it's highly, highly, I'm going to say 99% unlikely that anyone's going to feel this. I'm not saying 100%, but... Most of the time, you, yeah, most likely not going to feel something like this. But just because you can't feel something doesn't mean it's not dangerous, guys. You just have to say. So these tremor epicenters, uh, ETS, even the scientists have admitted that recent tremor, which occurs when the Cascadia subduction zone, so the subduction zone is caused by the Pacific Plate, or excuse me, excuse me, sorry, the Juan de Fuca Plate right up here, converging and going underneath the North American plate. So as those two converge, it causes a subduction zone. And when that subduction zone starts to creep, or when the Wanafuca plate starts to move quicker than it has before, it creates tremor. In other locations around the world, it creates large earthquakes and possibly tremor as well. But our plate is quite lubricated. It is lubricated very well. So our plate sees, or excuse me, our subduction zone sees more uh, episodic tremor and slip than it does slip in earthquakes really i mean that's why we don't have magnitude sevens all the time like other subduction zones do around the world i mean look at japan look at uh argentina and south america uh look at indonesia all those subduction zones have major earthquakes i mean i swear once a year they get at least a magnitude seven we really haven't gotten a magnitude seven at all closest thing we got to it in basically in the past hundred years was a magnitude 6.8 and that was the Nisqually quake of 2001 so we are very very lucky here because our plate is very lubricated as it de uh, as the Juan de Fuca plate slips beneath the North American plate but recently the scientists have been very confused as to why because beforehand the reason why it's called ETS means episodic tremor and slip 
meaning that this tremor is very episodic. And usually it's about every 14 months for us here in Washington State. Well, it's no longer episodic. It is literally bouncing back and forth. It's confusing even the most, the smartest scientists that research this stuff. It's just been very, very wild. So we had some in Vancouver Island not too long ago, right up here, right on the southern eastern tip. But recently, past few days, look at what has happened. Something almost impossible has happened. Let's, I'm going to show you why. <clears throat> the uh, Southern Oregon tremor usually hap doesn't happen as often as ours up in here in Washington State. Well, it's happening, I believe, again. I I just, I don't know what to make of this. It's weird. Look at this. 2,656 epicenters with most of the tremor epicenters being in Southern Oregon right down here, right along the border of Northern California. Why is that happening again? It has been so erratic our ETS wasn't even completely fulfilled for here in Puget Sound. Not even for Vancouver Island. It just makes no sense. It shouldn't be acting like this. So I just want you guys to keep an eye out for it. Remember, always have a disaster plan ready. Always. Always. No matter what happens. So keep an eye on it. Uh, episodic tremor and slip is still occurring in southern Oregon. And we got those magnitude 6s popping off off Vancouver Island. One more thing I wanted to add to this video. Something very intriguing is we did have a rare earthquake in central Wyoming. Look at this, a magnitude 2.5 at 5 kilometers in depth in central Wyoming on December 22nd, 2019. 11.03 UTC. That is not what I wanted you to see, though. Look at this. Deep earthquakes are very rare for Wyoming, even though the mantle plume, which feeds the supervolcano at Yellowstone, even though it is very deep, the mantle plume itself usually is very silent. Even if magma is actively flowing through that plume, it's usually very silent. We see very little, if any at all, of deep earthquakes deeper than, say, 30 kilometers. But this isn't at Yellowstone. This is in down in uh, southwestern Wyoming. All the way down here, let me see, all the way into the location. Right down here at 3.2 at 56.5 kilometers in depth. That is one of the deepest I've seen in Wyoming in many, 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 many years. It was, let's just say it's an enigmatic earthquake, a very mysterious oddball. It shouldn't be that deep in this location. I'm just saying that right now. One person reported feeling this deep. Deep earthquake, 3.2, 56.5 kilometers in depth in southwestern Wyoming. We're going to take a look at the at this from the closest seismic station possible. Let's go to phases real quick. Let's go to arrival time, 9.26. Okay, so the closest was SVWY in the UU network. Let's take a look at that now in the seismic program swarm of this crazy, weird, deep earthquake. So the weird deep magnitude 3.2 in southwestern Wyoming struck at 2234 UTC on December 23rd, 2019. Basically right, I'm talking about less than an hour after the magnitude 6s in uh, activity off the coast of Vancouver Island on the 23rd. So the timing is very weird. I definitely have to, I'm not saying they're exactly correlated. They're not exactly related, but the timing is pretty weird. And here we see right at about 2234 UTC. We do see the magnitude 3.2 at 56.5 kilometers in depth. And for how long it took to get to the station and the P and S wave arrival separations, you can definitely tell it was a deep earthquake. P waves are looking a little sketchy. Very, very weird. This was definitely an oddball, a very, very oddball find. Uh, lasted quite a while, actually. Good amount of time. And looking forward, not seeing really much. I mean, here, right here, it's very possible we had an aftershock right here, but I I don't think so. I'm not really seeing any force shocks either. Not seeing any force shocks at all. Yeah, and then no aftershocks. Really don't know what these are, though. These definitely don't look normal to me. It's definitely not tremor because it's not consistent, so I still haven't found out what that is. It's not showing on the surrounding stations. I'm still trying to figure out what it is, so... Give me some time to do that. If there's anything weird, then I'll just I'll let you guys know. But yeah, that was a deep quake, guys, in southwestern Wyoming in a strange spot. Very, very wacky quake. 
So right now is 9.55 p.m. Pacific Time, December 24, 2019. Just seeing if anything else has occurred while I have been recording this video. Not seeing much, guys. Not seeing too much. Uh, nothing has occurred since I recorded this video. Keep an eye out for more earthquakes off the coast of Vancouver Island and any possible more deep earthquake activity in Wyoming. I'll be back later, guys. God bless, and I hope you have a great Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year.